cheap PC, a slightly expensive microcontroller, a jack of all trades, and a really fun way to get started with robotics and embedded systems. Let's talk about Raspberry Pi. It's usually described and sold as a small computer. As long as you connect all the necessary peripheries to it, you can basically run it as a home PC. It's a very convenient way of getting started with programming and building projects at home. And the possibilities are endless, only limited by your imagination and potentially your Python skills. This is my Raspberry Pi, it's model three. It's a little bit ancient. I've had it since around 2016, 2017, but it still works today, which is a great testament to the technology. While there's various models out there, all of them are more or less similar in terms of what you can do with it. They're just getting better, faster, and stronger over time, but the concepts stay the same. Each Raspberry Pi will have a few ports where you can connect your keyboard, your mouse, your ethernet cable, unless your device comes with Wi-Fi, as well as an HDMI for plugging in a screen, a power cord, and on the back, a SIM card. All you need to get started with this as your computer is to install an operating system on that micro SD. You can do this by simply plugging it out and putting it into an existing device like a laptop or a PC and following the tutorial to set up your OS. You can choose from various options, but the Raspberry Pi specific one is usually the no brainer. Once this has been set up, you can simply put it back into your board. And as soon as you connect it with power and a screen again, it will boot up for you. And there you have it. If you've opened a computer before, you also know what to do with your Raspberry Pi. However, you can do more. You may have noticed you have a lot of these pins that you don't actually have on your laptop or computer, I would imagine. And this is where you can connect cables. Now the Raspberry Pi shares a lot of components and functionalities with microcontrollers as well. And you probably saw my previous videos on Arduino. Well, these pins are very similar and at the same time, quite different. They can provide power and ground your circuits and they can identify a particular pin, which means you can then program it. So by using a breadboard, like we've seen with an Arduino, you can create electrical circuits and even more complex programs. We'll go over why you would use one over the other in the next video. For now, all you need to know is this is a computer and it's especially well set up to start programming. For example, it comes with Python pre-installed and it can also run C++ or other programming languages. You can browse the internet with it and run a few programs and you can connect to the pins and build out some nice engineering projects. So it's a cheap PC, a slightly expensive microcontroller, a jack of all trades and a really fun way to get started with robotics and embedded systems. Now let's see what we can build with it.